Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nerds on Earth's weekly punch list, where we uh, talk about random topics every week, but we have been on a Disney Plus hype train for the past 10 weeks, uh, loving on WandaVision. And so today, hopefully all of you are on time with Daylight Savings Time. Maybe you guys are a little off, but here we are at our normal uh, 4.30 Central time to touch on as to touch on a little show called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming to Disney Plus this Friday and how hyped we are. I'm joined, of course, by resident nerds Clave and Jaws. Gentlemen, how are you both doing this fine afternoon? Great. We're ready for Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah, little eight-year-old Clave cannot believe this day is coming. Uh, yeah, man, especially after the success of WandaVision, excited to kind of see what uh, what this show is going to mean. I, uh, Mom, last night we watched the little trailer for the show, and she was like, all right, what movie should I watch this week to get ready? So, and what did you Captain tell Captain America, her? Winter Soldier. Yeah, and so today she watched Winter Soldier, yep. Yeah, and then uh, and then I told her after that, for sure, probably Civil War. Those are, those are pretty like the big two, right? Kind of get you in and. Yeah, I'd agree with well, that. Well, you're a better man than I am because I'm like, you need to step up your game and watch all 23 <laughs> movies and quit being weak. Come on, well, watch, she, watch them all straight through. She has, I think, watched and seen most of them. She just forgets sometimes. Or she didn't think she'd seen Winter Soldier, which I didn't make a, a little tear down oh. my face. So, Yeah, I mean, I think technically you should be watching every single movie that either Falcon or the Winter Soldier has been in which covers most most of the films covers a lot yes yeah, winter soldier forward then um so we are uh like we said friday is the first installment uh we wrapped up wandavision which all things considered was a fantastic foray uh into marvel studios venture into television and episodic uh the episodic nature of television um so we certainly love that and we we did a couple recaps uh of that via video and every uh jaws actually did a, a weekly recap of all those episodes as they came out got up early and, and cranked those cranked those recaps out for you and dropped all the nuggets of nerd wisdom that you could possibly want um and we'll be doing the same for the falcon and winter soldier on friday mornings so you guys can stay tuned for that Clave, what are you most excited for when it comes to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier? So Captain America Winter Soldier is, it's hard. It's hard to choose your favorite among Marvel movies. It's like choosing your favorite kid. But it might be my favorite right up there with Thor Ragnarok for different reasons. But it's that pound the ground action. It's that espionage spy. It's military science fiction, right? Military sci-fi as a genre, I love it, so good. you know? And so, so as a genre for this show, I'm, that's my primary thing that I'm excited about. You could, you could drop in any, any Marvel combination of Marvel characters and put it in military sci-fi. And I'd be pretty stoked about it just because I love that genre so much. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I every, go ahead, Joss. Well, and man, everything Captain America is tied to is just a takes on an epicness, right? It just it just has that feel of like if if Cap's involved, and um, you, you definitely get that feeling from trailers and stuff. These two guys are wrestling with you know, Cap's not Cap anymore. What does that mean? And uh, I think uh, I think there's some interesting stuff from Small Comics that could hint for things we can talk about later. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm so what I one thing we already talked about on on Wanda Vision side, but you know, Wanda and Vision they didn't really have those origin stories. You know, they didn't have that solo movie like we see their origins, and then it comes out a little bit more in the show, especially on Wanda's side. Um, same thing with Falcon and Winter Soldier, right? So you kind of get Winter Soldier we know much more about than sort of Falcon. Um, but now it's their time to really shine, get in the limelight, and really uh, showcase, you know, the the sort of uh, buddy cop kind of routine that they have. You kind of see in the trailers, like like they work 
are they going to work really well together, but also kind of be button heads the whole time? Um, so it's, it's really cool. Like that's, I love that sort of thing. And, and I think it's going to be, especially after sort of the weirdness of WandaVision, we're going to get some, we're going to get a little bit more action, going to get a little bit more, uh, comedy and things like that, that sort of all rolled up into one. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. And it's, it's confirmed that we're going to see Sam's family. You know, we, we get a peek into his family. I think it's his sister. It's going to feature, I, don't quote me on that. It's uh, it's a female lead that I think is his sister. It could be his mom or, you know, a significant other, that sort of thing. But we're going to see Sam's family, um, which I think is a lot of fun. And it's confirmed that that this show is going to deal with uh, PTSD, um, which the last time Marvel really covered that was Iron Man 3, yep. which was, if you remember that movie, Tony Stark's just, you know, he'd get the shakes from, um, from all the all the events of the alien invasion, and I think you know, I think that's compelling to see those characters kind of, you know, push through that, and they're heroes, right? And um, but it doesn't mean that they don't have those issues in their life, but they push through, and and we'll get to see that and root for them on screen, and then um, and again, I'm going to keep harping on the military sci-fi aspect because I watched. In preparation of this, I watched the best fight scene in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which is from Captain America Winter Soldier, which people think is the elevator fight scene. And then be <laughs> I I heart those arguments are good arguments. I will receive that, but I would say that might be the third best fight scene, even in that movie. The best fight scene is the bridge scene when Cap first realizes it's Bucky and just you know, it's not the Russo brother that's, that's going to direct this movie, so you won't have the same, you know, action direction. But it's not like Marvel forgets how to do fight scenes. We're going to see that style in this show, and I'm excited about that. In addition to character backstories, in addition to see them struggling with um, PTSD, um, I think that's going to be, oh, it's great. I'm excited. Yeah, something that uh, I've, I'm kind of glad that you you mentioned the, uh, the the fight scenes because Marvel always you know they like you 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 reference the elevator scene the bridge scene it's like these iconic little vignettes that they set up that are very creative by putting the heroes in these interesting situations um, and I also liked how you you mentioned you know as they explore uh, sort of the PTSD side of things you know when when we talk about like. Dungeons and Dragons characters or Pathfinder characters, you know, adventurers who go off and, and do a whole bunch of heroic stuff and just encounter otherworldly horrors and just are faced with all these challenges that would just, it's you know, trauma. yeah, it's trauma. Exactly. That's a good word. So, you know, by having heroes face that, it makes it them more human. You know, we can relate to some of those, I mean, obviously like we never took down an alien threat in New York, uh, but you know, smaller scale traumas, like we're all familiar with that sort of stuff. So it's interesting to see how they're going to, they're going to handle that. Well, and you've got two characters that like you guys are saying have dealt with trauma. Like it's interesting when we first meet Sam in winter soldier, working with other soldiers that are going through stuff, right? He, he that's sort of his job at that point in time before he re-enlist with cap and becomes his, his sidekick and partner. And I mean, gosh, you know, in Bucky's story, everything he's gone through, like, um, it's, it's an interesting thing to think about how, how much in some ways they, they share the same burdens as soldiers and, you know, how they face that together. And then on top of it, like they both were, were ashed. They both were Thanos, you know, or, yeah, they're back now, but yeah. like we hear parts of that, like of what I remember or know, or that kind of thing. So like, it's, um, it's definitely a, a challenging thing to sort of think about um, how much are they going to delve into that and how, how real will they be? Cause um, a whole different tone, uh, but still talking about, you know, pain and trauma and grief. So. The more we talk about this, the more excited I get and my expectations, my excitement was already up here. I'm like, I don't know where I go from here. I'm so excited. Like, the more we talk, I'm like, this is going to be great. And it's six episodes, correct? It's confirmed six, six episodes, episodes, unlike the nine. And six episodes is going to be typical for Marvel. The nine episodes of WandaVision is atypical. 
Is that correct from what we have? Yes, confirmed? Loki. I think Loki has confirmed yeah. six, right? And I think that they're saying uh, at least this one is um, hour long, closer to yeah. an hour than Wanda and uh, Vision were. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and the you know the other aspect too is if you think about the the effect of the pandemic is at this point we were supposed to have already had Black Widow, which again is that sort of you know military sci-fi mm. kind of thing, um, and so mm. you know that would have hyped us up a lot, and we probably would have seen some of the you know little tricks maybe that they're they're gonna kind of pull out of the bag for Falcon and Winter Soldier and that, um, but here we are waiting for for Black Widow still. Um, but I guess this will then be the the hyping catalyst as we go into uh, Black Widow's movie too. So, yeah, I think for sure they're gonna sort of share the same genre, this espionage, spy kind of stuff that uh, that's there. So let's kind of talk a little bit about comics because you guys are comic gurus. Um, where have we, has Falcon and Winter Soldier, have they done a lot, uh, in the, in the world of comics or what sort of comic lines are you guys thinking we may see, uh, as a part of this show? This is where Jaws disowns me as a friend. <laughs> I have not read a single <laughs> issue of Captain America and the Falcon, which is a classic Marvel comic that run, ran for you know, well over a hundred issues, but I, I just, for some reason, I didn't read that, but it, obviously that would have been Captain American Falcon. That would have been most of the buddy cop interplay that we'd see. So as far as I know, most of the winter soldier and Falcon stuff has been largely MCU and modern comics. I, I don't recall them a lot of interaction, obviously for winter soldier, you wouldn't have seen a lot of interaction in the bronze age because Bucky was frozen in nice, you know, and it wasn't until Brubaker's run that you got to see that classic Winter Soldier storyline that we saw in, in Captain America Winter Soldier. So that was probably 10 years ago in the comics, right, Jaws? Brubaker's Captain America run? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like the Brubaker Winter Soldier stuff. Like, And it was and honestly, for a long time, there were certain, certain characters that stayed dead, and Bucky was on that list. Mm -hmm. uh, so for them to bring him back was a big deal, and to Oh, and then obviously that inspired the movies that we see. Um, I think like that era is interesting. Like you're saying from the way back Falcon and Captain America, um, there's a lot of interesting stuff there. Some of it the, as a modern reader is a very doesn't problematic. Work. Like it just doesn't work. Um, it's an interesting thing because so, you kind of almost comics history, you sort of have it at the same point. You had DC and Marvel both trying to do the same thing. DC is kind of famous for this pairing where they put Green Arrow and Green Lantern together. One was sort of like the more conservative voice and one was the more liberal voice. And like, how do they deal with all that kind of stuff? At the same time, kind of in Marvel, you, you sort of had Captain America, as the old guy from the World War II era, back to life. And then Sam, who was a, a soldier, but like a street, came almost like a street activist, street character from a worst beginning but um but i think it's interesting there i i the thing this is to me is going to be the place where disney may stretch us marvel might stretch us is i don't un, i don't know how they're going to tell the story that i think they're going to tell without it being political right i think it will be political i think it'll be intense and then I, so. yeah and i think it's going to be very interesting to see like how Different people read into that on different sides because it is, um, it's, it's definitely like a, a potentially very intense story to kind of to think through and work through. And one more thing in, in comics is, you know, historically, the, the whole idea of sidekicks, you know, sidekicks, I mean, they still exist, but that's certainly not the trope that nowadays that it was back then, right? And so right. Falcon and Winter Soldier are going to be much more peers um and colleagues than you know than this sidekick sort of sort of relationship um, i think that just doesn't play as well in for modern audiences yeah and, and plus you know from what we've seen on screen already i mean they're both 
I mean, they're both heroes. They're more than capable of, you know, taking the lead. So I think, I think a lot of their, uh, you know, the consternation between them two, uh, between them two, between the two of them is, uh, you know, Bucky is a hundred years old. Like he's been around the block and you got, uh, Sam who is not nearly, I don't, you know, he's probably what in his thirties or something. Um, and so, you know, it's these different worlds, like, you know, Bucky's still adjusting to, to this world too, just like Cap was. And, you know, that, that storyline probably won't Mm -hmm. play out as much as it did. You know, we already saw that with, with Captain America, Mm -hmm. but just them coming from two different worlds, sort of two different sides and, and how they're going to, you know, work together, uh, you know, against whatever, you know, big, bad thing that they're going to accomplish in six episodes. (laughs) Which is right. which is the other thing, right? Six episodes of of content, and they have a legitimate like bickering banter, which is, I think, great. You know, like this, like almost like brothers who argue. I think that's going to be that's going to be a fun fun little element of this show. Bring some bring some lightness uh, to Jaws point. I think I think we should see um, see the fact that that sam's african-american you know and suddenly he is in the role of captain america and they're going to be folks who are um who are angry about that and i think i think we should see that come out on on the screen and i think marvel do a good job with it i yeah i'm i'm hopeful and confident and looking forward to that storyline same All right, do you do you want to go deep dive? I could really spoil the series for you if I'm right about storyline. I think we're we're let's, let's do it. Spoil me, baby. Yeah. So spoiler spoilers okay. about because Jaws, oh. Jaws has read the script, obviously, and so uh... <laughs> I wish. All right, so you, I think they're going to draw largely from the story called Captain America No More. Uh, mm-hmm. It came out in the late 1980s at the height of the iron contra war revelations and um it, it, i think it's a fantastic story that talks about and deals with the idea of patriotism um it, it clearly that storyline was written by some guys that i think are far more leftist and right in that era but I, but i think it was an interesting thing because it's captain america who who everybody sort of latches on to is the uber patriot who this storyline Basically, the government says, we own Captain America, and you don't get to be him anymore. Or if you're going to be him, you got to do what we tell you. There's a famous scene where Cap sort of surrenders everything and turns it in. They put the suit on a new guy and try to to kind of go from there. Um, I think it's an interesting thing, like like you're saying, uh, Clay, I think without a doubt, right? Like Cap picked Sam. Like it's clear in the end game, here you go, you're the guy. I kind of think they're going to come back to him and be like, eh, I don't know that you get to be the guy. Like, right. And that's U.S. Our- agent, right? That's going to be the appearance of U.S. agent. Yeah. The government so, um, pick. So I think that then it'll start to even lean into like what they've set up some with the Sokovia Accords and that kind of stuff of, no, no, we're going to, we're going to pick our guy. And, uh, and so we do know kind of from casting, there is a guy that is sort of a, much more like closer to Steve Rogers looking than Sam or Bucky is that uh, kind of dawns the, and we kind of have seen in the trailers a little like rally, like political thing where uh, we see the back of a guy running up front. So that's kind of what I think they're going to lean into a little bit. Um, in, in the midst of that storyline in the comics, which ran, I, I wrote it down, started in Captain America 332 goes all the way to 350 it was kind of the big big finale of it was 350 um uh which is crazy because it's only 18 comics but it's so deep and rich with story um in the midst of that they also have a guy who reveals himself that's called the flag smasher this whole thing is oh, all governments right. are corrupt i'm going to destroy all of them the and he his own little... yeah exactly and he forms a group called uh ultimatum which has some ridiculous let me find it anyway ultimatum is like shield used to be it stood for something and it's it's just over the top silly oh it's an acronym yes um and i would tell you what it stands for but i have nothing to prove to you. <laughs> <laughs> but 
I think that's going to be where they largely draw upon. And and I would think this would be sort of my thought process. So we know uh, if you watch the Marvel Legends stuff from Disney Plus, um, and prep for this show, they put up four profiles. Um, obviously Falcon, obviously Winter Soldier, but then they put up a, a Peggy Carter, um, a niece Sharon Carter, who we know from uh, movies, and then also. And then also uh, Zemo, who we know from uh, Civil War. So uh, Zemo is somehow going to be involved. I think they're probably going to introduce Flag Smasher kind of character and then kind of go from there. Um, I, I, I just think it's going to be really interesting to see how they navigate all of those. Like, is everybody going to read it through the lens of where they are politically or is it going to be something else? Like, you know, where I'm at, looking at that rally, it was hard not to look at it as you know, a rally that uh, I wouldn't have been at in the last presidential right. election, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's curious, that it, but it is. It's an interesting, like, discussion about, like, what's patriotism? Because um, that era, Cap, like, that was a big deal. There's an issue of Daredevil. Cap talks about who he is and what he stands for, you know, and that it's not it's not just the flag, it's the, the principles and the beliefs. Um, but I think it's going to be interesting to see, like, Sam try to claim that mantle and see how that works. And uh, do they try to take it away from him and how they react to that and all those kinds of things. So um, it's a great, if if you've got Marvel Unlimited, it's a great little, little run, I would say, to read before you get there. But uh, it's got lots of other side twists and turns, but I think that's going to be it feels like that's one of the main ones they're drawing from um and the guys who eventually becomes u.s agent starts off with the name super patriot uh, and i think it's pretty much been confirmed that uh that is who uh what's the actor's name wyatt uh, russell. Wyatt, wyatt, russell. Russell. Yeah, wyatt russell's playing uh, that guy so well speaking of casting i love to look at an imd be at casting and see like how many episodes they appear in, right? And to try to get clues to to what may happen. Uh, probably about six months ago, I was convinced the Grapplers were going to appear, which was an oh. great '80s team of female professional wrestlers. And I'm like, if there would be anything that would be fun in 2021, would be the like this team of like Sasha Banks female wrestlers, the Grapplers. You know, um, I cooled on that a little bit. Um, because the thread, I don't know that it'll be fully the grapplers, maybe some of them, because um, the thread I was pulling there was one of the grapplers was a character named Songbird, which went on to become a Thunderbolt. And Thunderbolts and Zemo, it's hard It's hard not to know that Zemo's in six episodes and not, and not think, please let it be Thunderbolts, you know? And I don't want to make up, like, fan fiction headcanon and... Like the way with WandaVision we were, where, you know, like we've made up all these expectations of like, it's got to be this, um, you know, so I want the story to come to me, but it's hard not to think the Thunderbolts with Baron Zemo. And so I was thinking of all the Thunderbolts characters and being like, okay, who are they going to play? But there are uh, a couple of female a uh, actresses that are going to be in it that are confirmed that I think will play large parts. And I hope they become reoccurring characters like the grapplers or the you know, or maybe, you know, just that songbird become the Thunderbolts. So there's a lot there that even though we know several years of Marvel Slate, you know, like what's coming down to like 2023, um, I'm hopeful with, that there's some characters that we're going to start to see uh, that lead to whole new properties. Well, yeah. And I, I mean, I think you're right. Like they, the MCU is notorious for introducing threads even if it's you know you know we see the grapplers or thunderbolts like right at the end just to be like who are those people like that's awesome uh and just get people thinking and then it's you know maybe depending on the the reception of that that determines like how how big they want to go in uh on those particular threads uh, but that would be really really cool i know you wrote uh, an article on the grapplers several several months ago that was very entertaining you I mean, love the grapplers 
Yeah, I mean they're just they're just fun, right? I mean it's just like like that '80s, you know, female wrestlers, and we couldn't, you know, we couldn't make it at the roller derby, so we're going, you know, going to be mercenaries and and do crime. Um, so it was a is a fun little storyline, and I think that is part of of fandom as us, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. I suspect over this six issue run that all of us will at some point you know, like, like one division in the dark hole, you know, and it's like, or, you know, when Monica happened, you know, we first see it or, or our head starts spinning. I'm sure after one or two episodes of Falcon and Winter Soldier, like our minds are going to start spinning and you'll see, you'll see some hot takes on nerds on earth where we're like trying to figure it out or whatever. And we're like, maybe it's this issue in the comics. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, so, you know, uh, Clave, you know this. The the grapplers uh, first show up in the uh, thing series. Yeah, yeah. I, was... <laughs> I like where your head's at, buddy. Confirm uh, the thing is going to be in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, the engineer from One Division is Reed Richards. We <laughs> got it. I mean, it's it's happening. It's confirmed. There's no way you can dislodge that from my mind now. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take it to Reddit. Yeah, that's. Uh... You know, I, I just want to jump back. Jaws, you made the comment about um, uh, Super Patriot. And we already know that uh, Don Cheadle is, is going to be in this as as War Machine. Uh, and we saw that, you know, the Iron Patriot, we saw that sort of storyline already. So it's, it's sort of interesting, like, you know, is he going to serve almost as a kind of a mentor character? Like, he, he obviously has that inside scoop to the to the military side of things. You know, so how is, you know, what's his role in this, in this greater story too? Um, but I, I love that. I love this sort of idea of, um, you know, how, how patriotic is too patriotic and like, where do you draw the lines? And even if you have, you know, the flag smashers, you know, anti-patriots who ironically believe that they're patriots just through their ideals in just a different way. So, you know, how do you draw, like, I'm sure, you know, Marvel's just going to, turn the dial up on all of that a little bit just to sort of make it more extreme. So, but you know, there's, there's threads of every little thing that, you know, there's no ideology that's quite perfect. Uh, if you, if you mm. turn it up too high on the stove, so. Yeah. And I think that's going to be one of the things that they really do get to tweak with, you know, and play with like, um, I rewatched part of, uh, of the Marvel movies that, where they first get the Sokovia Accords, and it was interesting watching uh, Sam and Rhodey be on opposite sides of it as they kind of argued back and forth for a few minutes. And it was like, this is uh, this is interesting to think about. You know, Sam got out of the military, whereas Rhodey kind of that was his world until you know, when he got him a suit and started changing it a little bit. So I think there's some real uh, real challenges there. Um, I will say one of the things that you kind of hear is. Um, that there's some sort of female villain uh and some people have thought that uh maybe she is they've taken flag smasher and uh gender swapped for uh for the okay. movie yeah and, it, the and there's a little bit where you could yeah. you could see zemo being a mentor to that kind of a person zemo's whole thing was of his family being killed in the Kovia, like you could see him being sort of an anti-government kind of a, a person too um and so I, I'm curious to see if, if we won't get a little uh, purist ideology versus realism and how, how that might all play out. Yeah. And and General Ross is going to appear in this. That's confirmed. And as you said, Marvel has done this type of thing before. Like, don't get me started on, you know, Civil War and, and you know, utilitarianism and the ontology and virtue ethics and Plato and Aristotle and how they handled those, you know, all those different philosophical views. Um, Marvel has done that very well and very like thread, they thread, threaded that needle super well during uh, Civil War, I thought. So they already have experience in that area. So I, I think they'll do a really good job in Falcon and Winter Soldier and uh, I'm excited for it. Yeah, they, they definitely paint the line and, and make it so the audience feels that sort of what side they're 
like leaning towards. They're like, I can see, I can see both sides of the aisle, so to speak. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's always a, a really good way to present things because it's like, you know, it's not cut and dry. The world is not cut and dry. So you can't just, you know, lump everything into one box or another box. Uh, and they are really, really good at, at doing that and letting the audience sort of take all the information and then draw a conclusion based on that. All right. So, uh, let's do some, uh, you want to do some crazy theories? Hit me with a crazy theory. All right, so Bucky's arm is Wakandan now. So are, are we going to get some Wakanda tie-in? Are we, you know, is he going to get it messed up? They have to repair it, something like that. I don't know. I just think that's a uh, Black Panther is such a great property. I don't want them to just, fortunately, leave it on the shelf. Like we need that would be an easy way to like tie it back in. And uh, you know, he and Sam need somewhere to go hide for a moment, is uh, get his checkup on his arm, something like that. So there's, there's interesting there. Um, I'm really stoked to see Sharon Carter. Like, I, I really want to see what she's going to be like in this uh, this circumstance. You know, in the comics, she's she's almost become Steve's sidekick for for a big stretch of comics. So to have her, she's going to be a part of this is really uh, is really good. And uh, she was great, and especially Winter Soldier. So, um, yeah. let's see what else. Other other crazy theories. Oh, uh, how about this? The big finale battle is going to be settled because Vision, white floating Vision, is going to come in and teach a philosophy class. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I'm there for it. Make everybody sit down in the room, and he's going to be like, "Guys, let's talk this over." So the ship of Theseus, and then cue <laughs> cue like a, a rotating thirty minutes later, and that's why <laughs> that's why you should all just settle down. <laughs> They just shake hands. And so I'm glad you mentioned Sharon Carter, Agent 13. Remember, Joe, this was ages ago. It was ages ago. That's for sure. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, so, so, so ages ago, Joe, I, I was saying that, that Sharon Carter, Agent 13, was on my short list of getting the cap shield. I thought that would that yeah. would have been a neat storyline as well if if she would have gotten Cap Shield. Um, just I love her as an actress. I've always loved her as a character. I think it's uh, so. I'm so this isn't like this big uh, prediction as much as like my own you know head canon fan excitement is. I'm excited to see her in the show and 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 what that means. I hope it means. Um, that she just doesn't like zip in and out. I hope it means that she's he's integral in some way and carries forward into other storylines. That's that's really cool uh, because that goes really well with you know Jaws' theory of you know they just want to take and and have whoever be Captain America you know have tap their guy in the shoulder. So what if they're like hiding you know passing the shield around from person to person? as you know like the government gets closer to it you know if they're sort of uh you know on the on the lamb and they pass it to sharon carter and now sharon carter is is cat for an episode or two like that'd be so fun yeah carrying it around i like to i like to think in terms of arcs you know because comic book fans you think in arcs we have what 20 properties confirmed for the future for example wandavision we knew we knew that wanda was confirmed to appear in in Doctor Strange, um, the, like with the Blade series coming up and the Dark Cold, you wonder, you know, like, will that thread continue? With Winter Soldier, uh, with Falcon and Winter Soldier, we have less of that confirmation other than obviously these characters will continue. Uh, there's a Disney Plus show, Armor Wars, which, you know, is going to be Rhodey, War Machine. But where do you think Winter Soldier, where do you think is going to be the primary thread yeah. for these characters in these other movies? It's not going to be, you know, Quantumania or, you know, Multiverse of Madness or, you know, all these other other properties. There's there's not as clear, you know, new wave Avengers thread as we thought we would see. That's a really good question. <laughs> I, don't... I, I think... Uh, so this is my take. I think out of all of the Disney properties like that they're going to put on, this is the one that I thought 
I could see multiple and even many seasons of this being a show. Mm -hmm. Um, like you know, WandaVision it hit the end, and it you know they called it the series finale. Doesn't mean that they couldn't do something else, but it it, it just felt like a we've told the story and it's wrapped. Indeed. Um, where this espionage world and that kind of a thing, gosh, especially if you go back through all the years and years of stories. I mean, there's lots of stuff to mine there. Um, I think that that's the one that to me, I, th I think, um, I don't want them to be segmented off into their own little world, but it, but it could maybe happen. Um, and, and it'd be interesting to see now, I don't think there's any doubt they'll be part of, in some way, the next Avengers and that kind of stuff. Um, and there certainly ties in to, you know, a Bucky being the White Wolf and going back to Black Panther and, you know, being involved in that movie somehow. You know, um, things like that. But, yeah, it is it is an interesting interesting case to kind of follow through. I, I, I mean, I think the invasion, right, the scroll invasion. Yep, the that, that would be invasion, my guess, yeah. That's a that's an easy pop back in for them, um, yeah. Kind of in between, it's interesting, to kind of think yeah, about. But are there multiple seasons, and, and it kind of becomes the quote unquote, you know, the Agents of Shield type show of yeah. Disney Plus? I don't know. I just like the characters. I love to see it in my head. Canon, the post credits series is going to be this unannounced Thunderbolt show. Like I'm, like that would I would just fall off the couch and die. If they'd be like, oh, there's yeah, actually yeah. another show that hasn't been announced, and it's a Thunderbolt, so we didn't want to spoil it, and it's going to be the after credits scene. Hey, listen, and you're seeing his prison with Zemo and Agatha talking through the wall. Oh? <laughs> those, are your, those are your first two Thunderbolts. Oh, you guys, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's going to be so good. Uh well, does, does anybody have any any last uh, final tidbits they want to share? Any any uh, other theories? Any other just comments on Falcon and Winter Soldier? Well, to be clear, I could talk about this for several hours, but at some point, like, oh, yeah. yeah, like who I'll say this: this I, uh, beard, just be excited. I love the character Super Agent, Super Patriot, and what transformation is in the comics over time. I, I kind of hope they give him justice in that. Like, like he doesn't start in a great place, but he becomes much different kind of a thing and character as time goes on. And then they use him in really weird places. Like, there's a case that we could see that guy in a Guardians of the Galaxy movie down the road. This that's not that he's in the comics that way. So, you know, um, I, I'm really excited to see that. Plus, he's like one of the only uh, super powered beings ever talked about from the state of Georgia. So, you know. So, uh, got to represent. <laughs> She's got it ready. That's awesome. Uh, well, well, this has been uh, great fun talking with you guys about Falcon Winter Soldier. Uh, I'm with Clave. I didn't think my height meter could get any more full, uh, but the thermometer is definitely broken now, right out the top. Uh, so I'm I'm very excited. Um, and, and to me, in the words of uh, shout out to Joseph Robinson, who's uh, watching the stream, uh, neither of you are Captain America. Both of you are Captain America <laughs> to me. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I, Thanks for... I, I... Go ahead, Clive. Sorry. I just want, I just really want one of those replica shields. I mean, shouldn't we all own one of those replica shields? We need one shields? on the wall. Yeah, they're so oh, they're just the best. I think if I if ever I win the lottery, that's the first indulgence I'm gonna get is a replica Captain America shield. Yeah, buy buy me Super one purchase. too when you win the lottery. Get get you know just get, pick up three. I'm sure I'm sure it's easy enough. Just pick up three. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for joining me, nerds. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned over at nerdsonearth.com. We'll have recaps of Falcon and Winter Soldier episodes. Uh, and we hope you're just as hyped as we are for it. It's a very exciting time to be a nerd. Clay of Jaws, thanks for joining me. We'll see you later, nerds. Later, nerds. See you, nerds. <laughs>